Who hasn't seen pictures of sea turtles with plastic bags stuck in their mouths, or read articles about the massive gyres of garbage, largely made up of plastics which are slowly turning in the South Atlantic Sea? We're more aware than ever, it seems, that single-use plastics and single-use objects of all sorts are a major source of concern for our environment and ourselves going forward. We know that they take an extremely long time to biodegrade, plastics do, that they are a major source of litter all over the planet, and plastic bags have found themselves a focal point of this social concern. However, one of the things I see missing from this conversation often is the cost to the environment of the alternatives that we consider, and how we can mitigate those costs, which is the topic of my speech. I'll be talking to you about the four most common bag options for getting your stuff from point A to point B. These options are high-density polyethylene bags, which are the standard plastic bags that you find in the grocery store, uh, paper bags, non-woven polypropylene bags, which are is the science name for those bags that you find near the checkout line of a grocery store, usually cost about 2 to $3, and cotton or canvas bags. I will be telling you how scientists assess these bags in terms of their damage posed to the environment of their production process, and how you can offset that through reuse and recycling. Up first will be the high-density polyethylene bag, which I will be just calling plastic bags from here on out for convenience sake. According to the Journal of Engineered Fibers and Fabrics, published through the Donghua University in China, the, poly mm, the plastic bag is the least durable and least often reused of all of these bag options. Given the, the, the significant importance of reuse in this bag selection question that we're dealing with, that is a very important thing to consider. Durability is very important no matter what bag you choose. It has to be durable enough to be reused enough times to offset the damage which its production cost. According to Ian Fraser, who has written about plastic pollution and plastic garbage for over 10 years now. He writes for The New Yorker, among other publications. He wrote, The seventh most common item gathered by the Ocean Conservancy's international coastal cleanup is plastic bags. Of all the trash that they gather, seventh most common, plastic bags. He also wrote that in China, a ban on plastic bags resulted in 40 billion fewer plastic bags used. It's an astonishing number to me. More astonishing, though, to me, was when he wrote that New Yorkers alone throw away 9.37 billion plastic bags every single year. That is one, admittedly large, but just one city out of all of the people on the planet, 9.37 billion plastic bags every year. Fortunately, plastic bags do have a quite low GWP, which stands for Global Warming Potential, which is how scientists measure the damage that the production cycle of a bag causes to the environment. I'll go into detail of that after I have finished introducing all of our bags. Up next is paper bags. According to the Life Cycle Assessment of Supermarket Bags, a study done for the UK's Environment Agency, paper bags are more durable than plastic bags, however they are also rarely reused. The Journal of Engineered Fibers and Fabrics, which I mentioned when I was talking about plastic bags, also said that paper bags are less often recycled than plastic bags. When I tell you the landfill rates of all of these bags, that is going to be very shocking to you, that paper bags are even lower in their recycle rates than all of these other options. The GWP of paper bags is also higher than that of plastic bags, significantly higher actually, but lower than the next few options. Non-woven polypropylene bags will be next. As I said before, these are the bags that you can often find next to the checkout line at a supermarket. According to the UK Environment Agency's study on bags, they are more durable than paper and plastic. However, according to the California State University's Chico Research Foundation, they are also very rarely recycled. Um, in fact, according to that same research foundation, 94.5% of plastic bags, non-woven polypropylene bags, and cotton bags end up in landfill at the end of their lifespan. As I said before, 
Paper bags are less often recycled even than plastic bags. Now, if the landfill rate of a plastic bag is 94.5%, that means the landfill rate of a paper bag is even worse. So, in addition to reuse, obviously recycling matters. Reuse is more important than recycling is in terms of offsetting the GWP of bags because the recycling process of bags increases their GWP. Uh, for example, the cost of recycling a paper bag is 91% higher than that of a plastic bag. So that needs to be considered when you're choosing your bags. And that adds to the, the critical importance of reuse instead of just recycling. Also, according to the Donghua University uh, study, these non-woven polypropylene bags are significantly more damaging to the environment to produce than paper or plastic uh, in their terms of their GWP. Up next will be cotton bags. Cotton bags are my personal favorite. They are more durable than all of the other options mentioned so far. Unfortunately, according to the Northern Ireland Assembly's Research and Library Service, they're also significantly more damaging to the environment to produce. The next series of slides, after I inform you about what GWP means in full, will demonstrate the reuse rates required for all of these bags in order for you to do the least harm as possible, no matter which bag you choose. Speaking of GWP, what is GWP? Simply put, GWP is how scientists measure the environmental cost, as I said before, of the production cycle of all of these bags. That includes the gathering of resources or the reprocessing of recycled resources. So you have your virgin resources, which would be trees from the forest for paper or oil from the ground for plastics based and so on, cotton from the field for cotton bags. You have the production cycle of getting them those raw resources or recycled resources turned into bags. And then you have the cost of moving those bags from the factory where they're produced to the shop where you use them or buy them. What's important about GWP in this process is GWP accounts for costs which neoclassical economics traditionally ignores. Some states, and by states I mean nation states, are offsetting this problem by adding costs to the system artificially later. However, according to traditional neoclassical economics, the release of gases into the atmosphere is free. There's no cost to that, according to economics, even though the reality is there's a very significant cost to that. It's just not accounted for. The release of waste into waterways also is treated as a free expense for neoclassical economics. So those costs are often hidden from us as consumers not deliberately, but simply as a matter of money theory. Uh, so we don't usually consider them when we're considering our bag options and our, our reuse requirements. The, the damage done to the environment through production is not often at the forefront of our mind when thinking plastic bags are bad, therefore I'll use paper. So what levels of reuse are required? Interestingly enough, according to 100% of, of my scholarly sources, which I find interesting, as I said, because they are all from all over the planet, and their research was performed independently over the span of several years. One study was done in 2006, another in 2011, for example. The studies were done in the United States, California side, the European continent, up in Ireland, and in the Northern, Ireland, Northern European countries, down in Australia, and up in China, my Donghua University friends. As I said before, they all agree on these numbers, which is very cool, and speaks to the efficiency of the global production system. A plastic bag must be reused no fewer than three times to offset its GWP. That's a nice low number, and given the low durability of plastic bags, it's good that it's a low number. Unfortunately, as I said before, most people don't reuse these plastics. There's a reason why they're called single-use plastics. We just don't reuse them. So how many times do we need to reuse the other options in order to get them to match that three reuse benchmark of a single-use plastic bag? Paper bags have to be reused nine times in order to match that number for plastic. Easily doable. If you keep a paper bag dry, it'll be, you could reuse it 10 to 20 times or more. Depends on how careful you are. Non-woven polypropylene bags have to be reused 33 times to match that 
three-use plastic bag goal. That's also totally doable. They're very durable bags. As I said before, they're polymer-based, so they're incredibly easy to clean. Cotton bags are a real kick. Uh, cotton bags have to be reused 393 times. These, that's insane. That's so many reuses. However, I bought my cotton bags 10 years ago, and if I've gone shopping once a week since then, I have more than met my reuse requirement, and I am now providing a net benefit to the environment by continuing to reuse those bags. Unfortunately, according to the Chico Research Foundation in Cal the uh, California State University, your typical canvas bag is only reused about 104 times before it is replaced. That is significantly damaging to the environment. If you're going to use a canvas bag or a cotton bag, the reuse obligation for that must be taken into account if your goal is to reduce harm. For example, if you are going to use a cotton bag a hundred times and then replace it, you are actually doing more harm to the environment than you would have had you been using plastic bags the entire time that you had that one cotton bag. As we've seen, if you use a plastic bag once and then recycle it, that is in fact better for the environment than say using a plastic bag once and then throwing it in the trash. However, the GWP of the plastic bag's production cycle requires at least three reuses. If you use a paper bag once and then recycle it, that is better than the paper bag going into the landfill. However, in terms of comparing the damage that you've caused between that, that decision of one use and then recycling, it's worse for the environment to have used paper than plastic in that instance. To alleviate our concerns about plastics and to leave a better world for the future, we, we have decided that we want to come up with a solution for plastic bags. However, as I've, as I've intimated in this speech, we are often not considering the costs of the alternatives. And while I am strongly opposed to single-use plastics in most instances, I am also strongly opposed to doing what we think feels best as opposed to what the numbers tell us are best. And the numbers tell us that if we aren't reusing our bags sufficiently enough, the alternatives are worse than the disease. If plastic is the disease and paper is the cure, and you're only using a paper bag once before you throw it away, you're making things worse. The same is true for all the other alternatives. The key to reduction of harm in choice of bags is reuse, not recycling, not avoiding plastic just on principle. Reuse is the key to making sure we leave a better world for your kids. Thank you very much.